We have a lot to discuss about Jalen Hurts. We're going to talk about Hassan Reddick and going into all of it. Do the Eagles clean it up? Are they going to look a lot better this week? We're going to go over tape. We're going to go over a lot of stuff and a couple roster moves ahead of the Monday Night Football game against the Atlanta Falcons. So let's get straight into it all. Yo, 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 what is going on, guys? I hope everyone's having a fantastic day today. This video is sponsored by BetUS, um, and we need to talk about, you know, the Eagles have a lot to clean up. Now, watching from what the Eagles did on Friday night to the rest of these games we watched on Sunday and Monday, the Eagles have looked a lot better than we actually thought, than a lot of other teams, at least in my opinion, another 80% of these teams did not play up to par. It seems like the Eagles are just flying high right now in productivity, scoring 34 points. But at the same time, we haven't even reached our mom our pure momentum, really the high top ceiling of what this roster could actually do with really good playing behind it. And yes, we did see Kellen Moore do some things that remind us of last year, which, you know, the read option keepers, the QB draw seems like defense is already kind of kind of already Jalen Hurts, they already kind of count Jalen Hurts out when it comes to these plays or always being caught with the hand in the cookie jar all the time when he keeps the football to himself. It just seems like it always happens. But when this team had a chance last Friday night to put the team away, score six, extra point seven, and could be in a two-score game, and you don't do that, and you don't throw the ball out of bounds, and you throw a pick in the end zone, what is that going to cost you? But before anything happens, before we talk about this, Video sponsored by BetUS, and this is a word from our sponsors. If I'm the betting man and I am and you're rooting for the Philadelphia Eagles, this is the redemption year for Jalen Hurts. This is the year we get the bad taste out of our mouths from last season. If I'm going all in, ride or die with a Super Bowl and bringing that Lombardi trophy back to Philadelphia for a second time, you need to go to BetUS, and I'm not wasting any time with it. I'm putting 500 down as the risk and getting 7,000 back at the end of the year because this offense is going to be explosive. This defense by Vic Fan. It's going to be dynamic. A 150% deposit bonus on your first three deposits up to $2,000 with code YouTube150. Click the link in the description below. Start betting and start winning. All right, so to really start everything off as of right now, yes, we know the tape. We know like when, when I was really just, I was so mad at this moment, okay? This was really the moment where the Eagles can put uh, the Packers, you know, kind of put them away a little bit towards the end of the game in the fourth quarter. And yes, this play is questionable. Like, why would Jalen Hurts throw this? You know, good protection moving to his right. A.J. Brown's wide open. Yes, he does slip in the end zone. OK, usually when you're watching the game this fast, you know, you don't see this stuff. Uh, but there was a little a little slip there when the ball uh, because you don't I don't think during the game you actually saw the slip when they actually showed the replay on him. You did. I must have missed it. Must have been looking at something else. Um, but we all kind of knew, you know, this was not the best decision from Jalen Hurts. Really could have thrown this out of bounds, could have done just a little bit more with it. Or, you know, if it's not going to be a two score game, then screw it. Just kick the three points. At least you're putting some points up on the board um, as of right now. So not, you know, so like I said, some of the sequences just didn't look good. You know, if he rolled to his right stopped and then threw it he would have more control over the football the velocity of the football the timing is always going to be off when you're throwing the football across your body that's just the way it is and AJ Brown being wide open shit I mean great could have threw it right there right there at that moment um still was running and yeah, the, ball, it, it's, the ball's going to take a lot longer to get there because that's, you know, you're throwing far side of the field. It's not like you're throwing north right in front of you. It'd be a different story. Uh, the momentum of the football is just totally different when you're throwing it in that direction. So, you know, the Eagles put themselves in a bind. I think one of the biggest problems they had last year was not putting teams away when it mattered the most. But Jalen Hurts did that this game even after this moment and they came back. Jalen Hurts looked uh, Jalen Hurts looked like he was just I wouldn't say have given up, but he was on the sideline not looking too happy and, and I get he wants some of these plays uh, some of these plays back, but this is what you have now. Okay? And to have a sequence like this, 
Uh, you're only going to learn from it. And we're going to find out how much of this field has really set this team back. The Brazil field, how slippery it was. We saw the DT slipping, the defensive end slipping, the wide receivers slipping, not just A.J. Brown in this play. I saw Devontae Smith just catch a ball, go upfield, and he slipped on his back. I mean, it's it's you can get hurt that way, like pretty easily. Um, so when it comes to something like this, I'm not going to kill him for it. This is something easily, easily like to throw across your, the throw across your body like that. You're, you're just asking for a turnover at that point. I don't even think that ball would have gotten to, uh, to uh, that late of a throw. I don't think that ball would have gotten to AJ Brown, regardless, even with, re even with really good protection there, maybe his, you know, the pocket was going to break down a little bit, had to go somewhere. But yeah, when Jalen Hurts scrambles, this is another option right here because Jalen Hurts is a weapon of his own. Everyone knows that he has that speed. Um, didn't use much of that speed in the first game. I think he was being very cautious of slipping because really he's the first man with the ball in his hands besides the center. And if he slips and he loses the ball or if it's a bad snap and he runs and he slips everywhere, uh, you know, the game's going to be a total disaster, even though I think the refs were a total disaster in this game. And the field was just not in good condition to play on. Unfortunately, that's just the truth. And, you know, I was killing Jalen Hurts for this when it happened. Of course, in the moment, you're going to be pissed off because, like, why would why would he? Why would you throw across your body? Why would you not throw out of bounds at this point? Take the three points. If it's not a two-score game, just take the three points. It's all I care about. So... I want to know from you guys what you think about that situation. If you think that Jalen Hurts is going to fix these little problems, that the offense will fix the little problems. And I mean, they probably will. They can't look worse than that because honestly, you didn't play a snap of preseason this past off season. So yeah, it's a little, you know, do you want to deal with this every year in a first game? Not really. Uh, but this is what you had to deal with. And you could tell, like, seems like they didn't practice in like eight years together. So it makes you wonder a little bit. But I feel like it will be cleaned up and we'll be good to go. And we'll be on Lingham Financial Field, dry grass, and ready to go. And we'll see what happens. Okay, second on the list as of right now is Hassan Reddick. Now, Joe, why are you talking about this nonstop? And, and trust me, it is annoying. Just like when Carson Wentz got traded to the Colts for a second-round conditional, I covered it all year because there was a first-round pick involved. Now, obviously, with this trade for Hassan Reddick, this was a third-round conditional pick. Uh, the Eagles got a third-round conditional pick for Hassan Reddick, so that could turn into a second-round pick for 26 if Hassan Reddick gets 10-plus sacks and plays 60-something percent of the steps this season. Well, it looks like he hasn't played anything. He's already forfeited $2 million this offseason when it comes to OTAs and training camp, and not even just that, He's already missed his first game, which he's already forfeited, what, another $800,000. So how far is Reddick going to take this? Will he get his wish? Now, since the Jets lost on Monday night, the Jets could feel pressured to sign him to whatever demands he wants because they're going to lose games. They're going to need him. And trust me, he was a big need for that game against Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy had a clean pocket the whole entire night, pretty much. Barely any pressure on Brock Purdy. Okay, and they were getting dismantled. No pass rush at all. They don't have enough there. So either two things are going to happen. One, well, three things. One, he'll, he'll at 30 years old, you don't want to be sitting out of a whole entire season, especially late in your career like this. You want to play, okay? Either he sits out the whole year, Okay, the Eagles, sorry, the Jets re-sign us on Reddick, or sorry, they give him his contract that obviously should have been on the table when he signed, which is, this is one of the dumbest things I've seen the Jets or a franchise ever do when they trade for a player, pen and paper should be ready. Or Hassan Reddick is going to say, you know what? I don't care how much money I'm losing this year. I'm going to go get the trade that I want. But Eagle fans have been talking about the situation. It's like, well, you know, what if Reddick came back? Is that even possible? If Reddick got, if the Eagles got Reddick back, and trust me, the Eagles wouldn't be giving any picks back. I doubt it especially the third round conditional. It, well, well, it won't be a conditional anymore if Reddick is back, okay? Um, this would be probably the biggest. Howie Roseman is, is a G, okay? He's a mafia boss. He's who he is. 
He's a fleecer. But at the same time, if he actually pulled that off, it would be like Howie Roseman would be the best GM. He would be more than the best GM in the in the National Football League. He would – no team would ever think that he would do something like this. Like Hassan Reddick coming back, look, the Eagles saw this from a mile away that he was going to hold out, and he was really sticking to a number. And the Eagles said, you know what? Instead of dealing with this BS, we're just going to get rid of him, rip the Band-Aid off, because he was going to hold out with the Eagles. He was going to do the same thing what he did to the Jets, the same thing. The Eagles weren't giving him 20, 25, whatever that 25 million a year, whatever he wanted. And the Jets seem like they don't, they're not even giving that to him right now. They might be in desperation because of their pass rush and they start losing more games. You know, they lose against a formidable opponent that could have had playoff implications. But to be honest with you, you know what I'm saying? You know, they didn't, they didn't win when it really mattered, but um, him coming back because Eagle fans have been talking about this for a while. I, I just, I don't see it happening. I didn't see Bryce Huff in this second game. Okay. Um, without slipping on the field uh, every single play. And I, I, you know, I think, I think Bryce Huff only had like two assisted tackles. Like that's all he had, but I saw him a lot in coverage. Is he making a difference in coverage? That's really the question. And if he's not, then the man needs to, they need to, they need to let him attack more. You're not paying him 17 million as an edge rusher to be in coverage that much. It's just the truth. You get paid as a defensive end for sacks. You don't get paid against the run. You don't get paid as a as a you know a pass coverage end that goes in coverage. You just you just don't you just don't get paid for that. If he could do both really well with picks involved too, that's even greater. Um, but like I said, do we do the Eagles have a closer when it comes to this defensive line? You know, who can you count on on that defensive line? Especially we talk about the edge because you haven't seen Jalex Hunt play yet. Nolan Smith is still a big question. Um, Brandon, you know, sorry, Brandon Graham is getting pressures and doing his thing. But how much are we really looking for Brandon Graham his last year before he retires? How much is he damage is he actually going to do this year? And Josh Sweat probably would have had a few sacks and got held a lot in that game against the Packers. So you're looking at Bryce Huffstead. You're getting paid the most here. And um, we need to see what you could do. So we'll see what happens on that situation going forward. And lastly, okay, the Eagles made a couple moves. Um, Eagles made a couple moves before uh, the game on Monday night, okay? Now, they did sign uh, wide receiver Danny Gray to the practice squad. He was a third-round pick in 2020, and they signed a cornerback, A.J. Woods. Now, this is from Anthony DeBona, because uh, I'll, I'll credit him. Uh, definitely follow him on X if you have it, slash Twitter, if you guys have not. So, uh, A.J. Woods, uh, apparently uh, undrafted free agent, spent uh, the preseason with the Commanders, Four seasons at Pittsburgh. Woods primarily played outside corner. Uh, he's 5'9", 186, but he's likely to be a, a nickel slot cornerback, most likely. Woods played 46 of his 55 preseason snaps for the Commanders at slot cornerback. So they're starting to get more depth at, at slot because I feel like they do need it. Because really, Quinion Mitchell most likely will go back to nickel this week. Isaiah Rodgers coming back to the outside. It sucks. I want Quinion Mitchell to play the outside so badly, but guys, unfortunately, Cooper DeGene needs to catch up right now because ultimately we want Quinion Mitchell to be on the outside. Ultimately, we want Cooper DeGene to be on the inside or play safety or whatever they're going to throw him, but I think DeGene needs to play on the inside going forward. And there has been any rumors about DeGene taking over at nickel anytime soon, my, probably the second team. Um, and Avante Maddox probably was the worst, probably was the worst player in the secondary that played. Probably was, I would say, coverage-wise, probably was the worst player there. Um, so if Quignon moves to the outside, it's going to force Avante Maddox to play the nickel spot. I'm sorry, sorry. If Quignon's playing on the inside, the only depth you have is Avante Maddox at nickel, but he could play safety as well because they've been literally having him as the backup for both spots. Isaiah Rodgers hasn't played in a long time, okay? So we have another player stepping into a very important game on Monday night that hasn't played for a while. So getting more depth there at A.J. Woods is great. Getting another receiver in Danny Gray is good. You know what I mean? Um, so 
you want to get as many hybrid guys as you possibly can. So you pick up AJ Woods that can play inside, outside, more on the inside, more size for the inside, uh, or I said, let's just say less size for the inside and speed and being very rangy. Um, you know, so we'll see that whole situation as it pads out going forward. Uh, I want to thank BetUS for sponsoring this video. Get 150% deposit bonus on your first three deposits up to $2,000. Go to BetUS. Start start putting money on the Eagles and start winning thousands, okay? Because you're going to make a lot of money uh, this season. Use promo code YouTube150 for the promotion, and I appreciate it so much. Let me know what you guys think about Jalen Hurts and the situation about that specific play, and do you think the Eagles will cl clean it up pretty quick, or do you think some sequences of this team offensively will still look the same going into week two? And if you guys... Let me know what you guys think about Hassan Reddick as well, where that situation persists. And do you actually think th that he could come back to the Eagles and um, obviously, uh, you know, adding more depth and what do you think this secondary is going to look like going forward um, with some, with the, the gene getting more healthy, getting more practices in? It's going to be really cool. Very interesting. And um, that's pretty much it, guys. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like the video and uh, appreciate all the support. And we'll be here back tomorrow. You guys have a great day. Shakes went up, files fly, files fly. Peace out. Peace.